afternoon. Today, uh, we are very happy to have Dr. Ren Hong Jin here uh, from UC Irvine. Um, Dr. Jin joined UC Irvine in 2007. Eight, yes, uh, I was a. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yes, uh, he was a post. Uh, uh, also, uh, previously, Dr. Jin received his PhD in applied mathematics from uh, UC Davis uh, with uh, Dr. Michael Zhang, who yeah. is a traffic flow theorist, and um, joined UCI in, in 2008. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't get to take traffic flow theory with uh, you when I was at UCI. Um, maybe I uh, would have chosen traffic flow if I took a class <laughs> under you. Anyways, uh, Dr. Jin has a uh, 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 research interest is primarily in traffic flow theory, connected vehicle, autonomous vehicle, right? Yeah. <laughs> Please correct me if I'm wrong. And um, also, he has uh, numerous journal articles in uh, transportation part B and part C. And please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Jin. Thank you, Jin. And uh, I'm greatly uh, honored to be invited to give a presentation at the University at Buffalo. And I understand this is a busy time for you guys. And uh, I, uh, I would like to thank you for coming to my presentation. And uh, I had a great time uh, here. And I arrived uh, last night uh, very late. But Jamie, uh, Professor Jamie Kang was uh, you know, waiting there and uh, picked me up. And I greatly appreciate that. And I learned that you guys have an excellent transportation program and a, a really genuinely uh, interdisciplinary. I, I really like that. And, uh, and even nicer is that you guys uh, are still expanding the program. And um, I learned a lot of interesting projects related to cyber physics systems, applied to um, safety, applied to freight, and all areas. And actually, uh, <coughs> my research is. Uh, also related to cyber physics systems that uh, you know, today I'm going to present on the control theoretic formulation of green driving strategies based on interview communications. Uh, today I will first give a <coughs> brief overview of the type of research I'm interested in and uh, uh, then I will give a brief introduction to the uh, green driving and why we are interested in green driving and what kind of green driving we are interested in. I, I noticed that uh, many of you and uh, like uh, Professor um, Sadek has been uh, working on eco-driving and these are highly related and uh, we are working on one part of uh, eco-driving. And then uh, present a control system description of the green driving problem and then uh, show some analysis of a simple green driving strategies and especially to uh, decide uh, to determine to discuss the limitations and the advantages of different strategies uh, then uh, we will present uh, the core part of today's presentation which is a distributed cooperative green driving strategy <coughs> And uh, finally, uh, I will present some uh, implementation efforts and field tests uh, using smart forms and the conclusion and the future studies. So we have uh, transportation systems which involve drivers, involve the infrastructure, policy, and so many things. And these are really complex systems. And as a transportation engineer, you know, we care about the performance related to safety, you know, the time, costs, emissions, and uh, you know, for others, we will care about the land use, and so on. And our goal is really uh, try to, reach you, uh, to uh, try to reach some desired performance. And then, <coughs> to really do that, um, many of the times we have to detect we have to mirror and estimate and communicate the performance of the current system and compare them with the desired performance so that we can design some control management and planning design and so on. All of this can be considered as a control strategies for the control system. 
actually this is my view of a transportation system. And my undergraduate degree was in automatic control, that's like systems engineering, electric engineering. And I really <coughs> like to like to study the type of uh, the type of uh, complex systems as uh, transportation systems. And uh, then uh, one important part of the transportation system is the congestion. If there's no congestion, then uh, many things can be easily solved. <coughs> Why to understand the congestion? And we need to understand the uh, performance of critical network bottlenecks. For example, this is a bottleneck downstream to a merge area uh, in California. And I noticed that you guys have much nicer traffic condition. That's great, but in California, um, when we have two, one main line freeway and one on ramp, they merge together and this induces a lot of lane changes. <coughs> and these lane changes can reduce the capacity of the downstream and then uh, this is the major bottleneck area and then <coughs> uh, how much the capacity we can achieve under different conditions this is a really important question to answer in order to understand the congestion level in the whole network and then when we have all these bottleneck together uh, this will shape the traffic dynamics in the whole networks. But in the whole network, we have a lot of interactions among the different bottlenecks, like the diverging and merging bottleneck. Here is a, uh, in the morning every morning period of the Los Angeles and traffic network, starting from 6:30, and we have already seen some congestion. The, the, the red is for really low speed, uh, below 25. Uh, 35 miles per hour, and then we can see the uh, very uh, interesting dynamics uh, of the uh, congestion build up first, and then uh, yeah, and then uh, 8:30 is pretty much the start of the uh, peak period, and then the last uh, I think it's 7:30 last to um, nine, about one and a half hour, and then uh, it starts to dissipate. <coughs> Mm. Then, uh, how to model these dynamics? And also, what we uh, one interesting phenomenon we observe is that uh, during the peak period, the congestion patterns are relatively stable. That means, you know, the location of congestion and the length of the queues are relatively stable. So we define we call this as stationary states. Then. Uh, can we model these stationary states? We know that uh, you might have taken a transportation planning classes. We usually use a link performance function and so on. But uh, there are limitations to this traditional approach since they do not consider the interaction among links and so on. Then uh, can we build some simple models for these uh, stationary states? And also based on that, to study the congestion build up and the dissipation, actually that is one of my major research interests. <clears throat> uh, then uh, another aspect is that the traffic flow can be unstable. Uh, for example, this is a really simple network with one diverge and one merge. And if the demand pattern uh, is constant and the route choice proportion is constant, and uh, intuitively we would expect this network to settle down in some stationary state. I mean, that is a really previous state. But uh, it turns out it's not the case. Uh, under certain conditions, we can see uh, the uh, periodic oscillations arising from this network. So uh, we figure this is one type of traffic instability caused by network structure alone, not the traditional instability caused by the car following behaviors and so on. So for example, when this side, this is the round choice proportion, when it gets larger than uh, one third, actually we will see some periodic uh, oscillations uh, in this network. And uh, this, this type of work, uh, actually this observation was done with uh, a simulation in a self-transmission model. I don't know if you guys know, use self-transmission model. I teach in the class. Oh, okay, yeah. great, yeah. So, <clears throat> It was observed there, and uh, I was surprised to see this because I was expecting, you know, the uh, very trivial uh, constant states. But then uh, later, after more analysis and uh, 
we found that this is related to the instability of network traffic flow. And <coughs> uh, excuse and me, can, can you go back? So what are those two curves? Uh, these two curves, one is the input. Uh, we have two rows. Uh, by input, we call this uh, input at the diverging. You know, we have diverge yeah. right. the input to the uh, to the uh, uh, to these two rows, and output is uh, the outflow at the merging point. And uh, right. So the two curves in that input figure, well, what are they? Uh, they are flows. They are um, they are flow rates. Compared with, uh, they are scaled flow rates. So if you go back to the uh, flow rates. network, mm -hmm. so I think Mr. Yeah. Meng would see. Yeah. So you have like there's one flow coming from here. Yeah, and yeah, and right. One flow coming from there. Right. So the curves representing the flow rates on those, those one and two. Yeah, right. But oh, the demand consider that the demand is constant actually. Yeah. We apply the constant demand to the network, mm -hmm. and then uh, these vehicles would choose their. Uh, you know, they're yeah. predefined routes uh, with a certain yeah. proportion, and yeah. Right, but but it seems that it's always on one one road. There's a higher density traffic flow than the other. You don't really have the uh, oscillation factors. Uh, we have, yeah. This is a major road, and this is a is a minor road, and we have higher flow rate yeah. on one of the roads. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This that depends on the. The route choice proportion. Yeah. So the instability arises because of the merge between one and two, um, or not? Actually, uh, talking about the mechanism, uh, that is, um, in our recent study, we we found a circular information propagation path in this network. For example, if this network is congested, this is not congested. We know that traffic waves would move backwards on the congested roads and forward on the uncongested road, and then we actually have circular information propagation path in this network, and then under certain conditions, this uh, this um, circular information propagation will become uh, unstable, and uh, we actually use uh, the Pankari map um, method to analyze the instability. So I don't know if I answer your well, question. Well, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm just, I guess uh, to the degree that definitely there are variations, I agree. But it's not as <clears throat> I would expect that, you know, drastic, drastically oscillate. Oscillate to me, like in the communication network, it will be one one path ov overloaded has a lot higher, mm -hmm. and then you don't do the route flapping, what they call it, the internet. Uh -huh. The other gets, you know, purely congested and it moves the back and forth. But right yeah. now, each one, one is still dominating the other. It's just that there are some variations. Right, yeah, that's another type of uh, instability that we can observe in a road network due to, due to route choice behavior. Uh, that's called overreaction when we have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when we have information, tra travel information. But in this case, interestingly, there's no route choice. Mm, the, the route choice behavior is determined. That's why it's so uh, counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. So we also have other type of instability caused by uh, car falling behavior, but this is the one new type of instability, and it's purely related to the network structure. So mm, you can see that uh, my approach uh, has been kind of a systems oriented, I'm interested in the equilibrium points, the stability of this, and uh, there are a lot of uh, opportunities in this area to understand uh, you know, the basic um, basic characteristics of traffic network. Yeah. And then at the same time, I'm also interested in uh, interview communication or connected vehicle technologies. Um, and uh, we actually built uh, some uh, smartphone-based uh, vehicle-to-bike communication system to warn the vehicles of the uh, you know, existence of bikes around. And uh, we did some uh, field tests, and, uh, and we built our own server, our smartphone apps on the uh, car, on the car, and also bike. And uh, we also have some studies on the crowd-sourced uh, pothole detection. Uh, using the 
accelerometer coming with the smartphones, for example, this is one protocol. And, <coughs> and the, uh, the research that I'm going to present is uh, to apply to use this uh, vehicle to vehicle communication to control traffic uh, so as to uh, uh, achieve some better environmental effects. We call this as green driving. Uh, as, as far as I understand, this is consistent with the eco driving, but we are more focused on the traffic side uh, than the route choice and the other behaviors. Mm. Uh, that's about uh, the type of research uh, I'm working on. So uh, basically, I take uh, I consider this a transportation system as a control system. I try to understand the basic characteristics of such system, and then I use the advanced communication technologies uh, to control the performance of the system. And mm, for green driving, mm. uh, it is well known that uh, the transportation sector. Uh, contributes significantly to greenhouse gas emissions and other emissions and uh, particularly by a uh, passenger car and uh, freight trucks <coughs> and uh, many uh, of these uh, impacts are highly related to driving behaviors like uh, speed, acceleration, route choice, departure time choice and uh, actually today my focus is on the speed and uh, acceleration is that not on the route choice, departure time choice, or even mode choice, and so on. And then uh, here is a, a, a well-known curve between the uh, emission and uh, the average speed. Basically, we have uh, one optimal aver uh, average speed around 35 miles per hour. And uh, with a lower speed, and then the the emissions will be higher with higher speed uh, emissions will also be higher at the same time <coughs> at this average speed even at the same speed we could have some oscillations in the speed profile uh, basically means stop and go then that will cause some excessive uh, emissions if we can actually this was done by uh, professor Matt Bach uh, from uh, uh, from uh, UC Riverside, if we can smooth the speed profile, actually we can uh, reduce the emissions. And uh, that is our motivation. We want to use the, the connected vehicle technology to smooth. Well, no, so, so that curve is um, mm -hmm. the average speed for the all the vehicles on a specific link, mm -hmm. or, or the average speed of, of one particular vehicle. That's the average speed for all the vehicles? Uh, yeah, they uh, tested quite a number of vehicles. This is a statistic curve. Uh -huh. Yeah, for and example, it's generic for whatever type of uh, of vehicle, or whatever type of road, or specific for a vehicle type or, or a road type. Uh, uh, actually, uh, we talk about that. Maybe uh, the absolute numbers are different for different types of vehicle or different road conditions. Okay. But the shape would look uh, similar. Actually, I believe he used a CMN and you know, or uh, his test okay. fac facility to get the curve. And uh, when we look at the emission numbers, we uh, usually mm, just look at the relative yeah. values. Yeah. And, and this curve is published? In, in yes, and I believe it's in a 2009, mm -hmm. or 2009 paper, okay. or 2009 or 2008. If you are interested in this, I can forward Please, this. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I, I will forward this. Uh, can you explain this um, graph a little bit? Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. The black side it says, okay, if I apply some congestion mitigation strategy, mm -hmm. then I can reduce the, uh, uh, you know, the emission. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what about the speed management? Day? So, when the speed range is uh, mm -hmm. 65 miles per hour or higher, uh -huh. what does that mean? As a speed management technique, your or well, speed management techniques like uh, speed limit or um, police enforcement yeah. to uh, discourage such excessive speeds uh, to drive uh, within the speed limit. While these congestion mitigation strategies, uh, we will uh, improve the traffic conditions so that vehicles can drive faster. Oh, you are not, yeah. not, not showing the benefit of 
the technique. You're just showing. Oh. I'm trying to understand what you're trying to show in this. this mm -hmm. The technique is more like a spill limit. Let's say now the spill limit is 60 miles per hour. Yeah. Maybe the CO2 emission is okay. But if we increase the spill limit to 75 or 80, actually we will expect more emissions. Yeah. So oh. that, that's. Um, I, I, so for this region, you need yeah. to control the speed. Yeah, so for this side. For this region. No. Sense. You mean this side? The speed yeah. management, uh, uh, does this but make sense? So we don't want to have, you know, oh. we don't want to, you know, if, if okay. people are trying to speed, you know, to drive at a high speed, then uh, it's not good for the environment. So we want to have a... Uh, I see. I guess I'm expecting a curve which shows, okay, here's the, you know, uh, emission, mm -hmm. but if I apply this, technique, I can reduce the emission by this much. Mm -hmm. If I apply that emission, I see that for oh, that the traffic yeah. flow smoothing technique. It looks yes, like you, right. you can reduce the thing, right? Yeah. But but I don't see how, what's the what's the benefit of the congestion mitigation oh, strategy? And uh, that's significant. It depends on where we are at this moment. For example, in the California, on some roads, the speed can be as low as 10 miles per hour. Correct. Then if we can improve the throughput of certain bottleneck, so that uh, you know there's no um, such serious congestion, then the vehicles can drive at 35, and then you can see the respective oh, improvement. That's I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we drive at this speed, then this would be the emissions. But you know it would be I obviously see. better to drive at this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this uh, definitely this will improve the uh, reduce the travel time and also improve the uh, reduce the emissions. And then the other side, okay, that's a traffic flow smoothing technique. <coughs> Our study falls in this category. We are not trying to improve the mobility itself. We focus on the smooth, uh, smoothing the speed profile. Okay. <coughs> yeah, actually, uh, we have experienced a lot of For the first time, Japanese research For the first time, Japanese researchers have conducted a real-life experiment that shows how some traffic jams appear for no apparent reason. They placed 22 vehicles on a single track and asked the drivers to cruise round at a constant speed of 30 km an hour. At first, traffic moved smoothly, but soon the distance between cars started to vary and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track, but the jam spread backwards around the track like a shock wave at a rate of about 20 km an hour. Real life jams move backwards at about the same speed. Okay. Yeah, so uh, stop and go traffic can arise with no apparent reasons or can be caused by uh, the bottlenecks on the road. So then uh, mm, the green driving strategies we can have, some have been mentioned, we can have segment speed control uh, and uh, we also have an uh, intelligent speed adaptation and uh, this are usually manually driven vehicles and uh, the information are coming from aggregate sources like the loop detectors and they will be shared to these drivers and uh, then uh, these drivers can change their speed limit accordingly. Uh, actually, uh, uh, many people have been doing this such heuristic green driving in their uh, you know, in, in, uh, in their uh, uh, daily driving experience and actually uh, uh, one day when I was going from uh, Los Angeles Los Angeles airport back home and uh, I realized that I was taking the super shuttle and I realized in that uh, the, uh, the driver was doing exactly green driving basically uh, when uh, it was congested and we have a stop and go and uh, when the vehicles in front are accelerating actually my driver just slowly accelerate and this can uh, avoid later uh, deceleration a lot and uh, then actually at that time we were done with our study and uh, I was wondering how our uh, how our algorithm would compare with such heuristic driving strategies by uh, uh, these really experienced drivers and then um, we are trying to implement this uh, using interview communication and uh, uh, interview communication uh, usually uh, would be based on dedicated short-range communication 
And uh, in such a system, we need to study, you know, we need to understand the connectivity throughput of such a communication network. And actually, it turns out uh, this wireless communication network can be significantly different from uh, other wireless communication network because of the distribution of vehicles on the road. Right? We, uh, we have this networked uh, structure and we have congestions <coughs> in some places and we have different uh, road types. <coughs> and then uh, the hardware, software and the simulations are all important to understand these interface communication systems. And then uh, on the other hand, uh, the applications related to safety, mobility and the environmental impacts are also important for, for this. And <coughs> The type of green driving strategy we are going to build is based on control theory and uh, our, we are using this newest car volume model and just proposed in uh, 2002 and actually has uh, two regimes uh, when it is free flow the speed is the free flow speed or when it is congested then you will exactly follow the leading vehicle's trajectory and basically that means if the leading vehicle is doing stop and go then the following vehicle will do that uh, you will not uh, magnify the oscillation or uh, uh, dampen the, uh, the oscillation. So, um, actually, the, uh, from this model, there's a car following criterion. That is, the following speed should be determined by the clearance. The clearance is the distance between the leading vehicle's rear bumper and the following vehicle's front bumper. <coughs> And uh, the performance measurements, uh, we can use a speed profile like average speed and the standard deviation of the speed, or we can use uh, emissions. Here we are using CMAN and we can also use uh, moves, uh, and we are also just using one type of vehicle. And uh, again, the absolute values are not that meaningful. What we care about are the relative uh, changes uh, in the emissions before and after applying this green driving strategy. And then we can formulate a feedback control system. Here our control signal is a, the advisory speed limit. Uh, we, and this is different from many autonomous vehicles. In the autonomous vehicles, we directly control the acceleration rate uh, through controlling the, you know, the uh, gas uh, pedals and the brakes. And so we are using the um, advisory speed limit as a control signal. This is significant, significantly different from autonomous vehicles. And then the control system uh, can be written like that, except uh, here, before it was a posted speed limit, now we are using individual advisory speed limit. And then, um, our goal is to develop a feedback, uh, feedback um, algorithm so that we can determine this uh, advisory speed limit and this turns out to be a distributed cooperative uh, control uh, because uh, each uh, vehicle would have to control its own trajectory but at the same time they are also sharing information among each other through vehicle to vehicle communication. Mm. This is naturally a distributed cooperative control and but it's different from existing distributed cooperative control and uh, which are usually designed for military you know, for the uh, for the uh, other type of vehicles where we have 100% market penetration rate but in the traffic flow uh, we don't have that uh, another difference is that uh, in these autonomous vehicles Again, I mentioned that the control signal is usually the acceleration rate. And uh, also, um, this is similar related to a, a collaborative, uh, a cooperative adaptive cruise control, but again, it's different as we don't directly control the mechanics of the vehicle. I'm, I'm not a control uh, person, so can you explain that equation uh, listed on the control system? What is XG? You mean this one? Or what are you minimizing? It? Okay, yeah, XG uh, is the location of the control of the green driving vehicle at time T. Location? Location. Okay. Of the, this G means green driving vehicle. Yeah. And uh, this is the advisory speed yeah. limit. Yeah. And this tau is a 
kind of reaction time or time of gap to be okay. exact. Yeah. And this is uh, the part when the speed when the speed is controlled by the advisory speed limit, uh -huh. but the speed can be lower than this speed limit. Right. Then in this case, it will follow its leading vehicle. X G minus one T is the location of the leading vehicle. Okay. While this S J is the jam spacing, that is a, ma a minimum spacing uh, the vehicle would like okay. to have. Uh -huh. Yeah, the safe for, for safety. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. When the speed, the speed can be below this speed limit, then it has to follow this rule. Mm -hmm. And then this is the location of the green driving vehicle at T plus delay. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, one of the, if not the, the simplest uh, car falling model. Yeah. So uh, it, uh, you can, uh, we can actually analyze the performance of this car falling model. Mm -hmm. <coughs> With more complicated car body models, we might have more realistic behavior, but it will be much harder to analyze. Then, for each vehicle, we have this uh, traditional block diagram and control um, block diagram. And again, here our output will be location, speed, accelerations, and uh, emissions. And our sensor would be radar, GPS, and our uh, our control signal is at advisory speed limit, mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, here we have a new component. And uh, when we design the control, the controller or the algorithm, actually we use the interview communication to share information among all the screen driving vehicles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so how many? <laughs> Well, no, what, what are your control objectives? So yeah. by adding this feedback loop, what do you want to achieve? Yeah, we want to have a, as smooth as possible speed profile. So it's not to minimize, let's say, the difference between your advisory speed and also this actually observed speed. So uh, that's not no. okay. Yeah, that is a, just a control signal. We want to smooth the the speed profile so that the vehicles do not have to go through many accelerations and decelerations. Mm -hmm. And how do you measure the uh, smoothing, like the variance in the speed over? Uh, uh, yeah, we are um, we are using uh, we can use the standard deviation okay. in the speed, or we can directly use the emissions calculated okay. from CMAP. When you try to smooth the speed. Do you also consider uh, to minimize the delay? Or uh, no, room? actually, yeah, oh, no, oh, yeah. But uh, definitely, that is a constraint. We don't want to uh, get longer travel. Yeah. We want to have the maintain the same average speed. Oh. Yeah. So we feel this is a relatively uh, easier objective to achieve. Then actually we can design some really simple green driving strategies. Like um, we can apply a constant speed, for example, for the uh, following vehicle. And uh, we are considering, uh, okay, so it does not show well. So here, this is the average speed of the leader. Basically, we won't have the same average speed. But uh, let's try to use this average speed plus some error term to the following vehicle. Use this as the advisory speed limit. And we do some analysis and find that if the leading vehicle have this kind of oscillatory speed profile, and if there's no green driving, we know that the following vehicle would have exactly the same speed profile with some delay. That would be this one. But if this, this epsilon, uh, if, if the difference uh, is positive. It, it, we add, we allow a little bit larger speed limit. But remember that this is speed limit. It does not mean the vehicle will have exact the speed. It can be lower. Then the speed profile will be a little bit smoother, but we still have oscillations. When this epsilon equals zero, you know, that is the ideal situation. <clears throat> then we have you know, a really smooth trajectory and at the same uh, average speed. When it is 
smaller than the leading vehicle's average speed and it's also smooth, but definitely this is not ideal because the average speed is lower and the traveling time is faster. Basically, the following vehicle lost track of the leading vehicle. This is not ideal. So the, uh, the one that is like the sine uh, mm -hmm. wave, this yes. is the speed of the front vehicle? Yes, the leading vehicle. And the leading vehicle has to be the vehicle immediately in front or they allow for uh, other vehicles in between? Yeah, immediately. It has to be the one immediately yeah. in front. Yeah. But uh, if we have some distance, then uh, actually the, the, the profile will be the same, except the, the delay will be longer. Yeah. Why if you're greater than zero, you have these oscillations still? Yeah, we still have uh, we still have uh, oscillations because you know the vehicle, the falling vehicle, can get to larger speed. Okay. But then larger speed basically means uh, we have to decelerate later. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> that means okay, this would be good. We want to we want the a falling vehicle would have the same uh, would use the fall uh, would use the leading vehicle's average speed as an advisory speed limit. But in reality, we have a lot of randomness, and you know also mirror uh, detection errors and so on. So this cannot be a, a robust, uh, a uh, robust algorithm. So uh, then, the lesson we learned here is that the speed limit should be close to the leading vehicle's average speed, but probably should be a little bit higher than that, so that the following vehicle will now lose track of the uh, leading vehicle. Yeah. Um, then actually we can also have uh, some simple cooperative strategies. Like let's use the average speed of all green driving vehicles as a speed limit. That's uh, you know, the, the simplest cooperative strategy. But definitely this will lead to smooth uh, speed profile. But you can lose car following and capabilities. Uh, you can imagine if all vehicles are stopped by the red light and some green driving vehicles, uh, they try to use this at, at their average speed, uh, as their um, advisory speed limit, then that would be zero. Then it means when the light turns green, they will not be able to follow the traffic stream to go through the intersection. So this is not um, ideal. And uh, another strategy which has been used in the literature uh, in other contexts is to use the uh, average speed. Yeah, uh, this does not show where well. this is the average speed plus uh, the uh, standard deviation. And it has the same advantages as uh, just use the average speed. And uh, you, in the extreme case, vehicles will not be able to accelerate when the light turns green. And mm, another way is to use the uh, average expected speed based on the clearance uh, information. And in this case, actually, uh, vehicles will be able to follow, the, the green driving vehicles will be able to follow the leading vehicles, but the speed profile may not be smooth you know, through the analysis. But uh, what we learned from uh, the analysis is that we want to use some component of the average speed, but at the same time, some component of the uh, average expected speed. That's how we are going to uh, devise a distributed cooperative uh, green driving strategy. And we actually have four design rules. We want to maintain car following uh, so that the green driving vehicles would have the same average speed as other uh, vehicles. And actually this car following is only need to be satisfied once in a while. Uh, if the following vehicle, if this car following uh, rule is set by all the time, then basically that means uh, they have the same speed profile. But if periodically the vehicle uh, catches the leading vehicle, that would be good enough. Uh, that is, that is uh, the goal we want to achieve. And of course, we want to have smoother speed profiles so to reduce the emissions and fuel consumption. <clears throat> and actually, we want this strategy to be effective even with just one green driving vehicles, like what I experienced with the 
the super shuttle case. Actually, that was also effective because of the car following thing, and the other vehicles have to follow the leader. Um, then uh, we also want to add cooperation. So basically, with more connected vehicles, we should have better effects with a well-designed algorithm. And lastly, we want to <clears throat> have a limited communication. We don't want to have too much communication, uh, which will congest the communication network. And then uh, we come up with uh, this uh, feedback control system. And <clears throat> uh, this is a control system for one vehicle. And uh, before determining the final advisory speed limit, uh, we communicate uh, this uh, advisory speed limit for each vehicle through inter-vehicle communication system. So we have basically two steps. Each vehicle would have uh, would design its own advisory speed limits using a feedback control system uh, by collecting the historical con uh, the clearance and the speeds, and then we come up with one advisory speed limit for one vehicle, and then all vehicles just sh share their advisory speed limits and then we average the advisory speed limits one vehicle collected and that will be the final advisory speed limit for this vehicle to apply when you say all oh, you mean i mean just in the same platoon sort of thing or sharing uh, or what, what yeah we are considering just one sing, uh, single platoon actually yeah uh, we yeah, are not getting to consider you know, other vehicles. Yeah, so definitely. The so the range is what? Like the com is it the, uh, constrained by the communication range, or how do you decide the length of the vehicle? Yeah, th these are really important questions to answer. How, you know, which vehicles are related to each other. Right. Mm -hmm. In our case, we started with a simple traffic scenario. For example, all vehicles on the green road, as shown in that video. Yeah, but. Eventually, we want to apply to the whole network. Then we have to determine, you know, which vehicles should communicate with uh, which vehicles. Those type of questions. But it doesn't make sense to even consider vehicles that are far from me, mm -hmm. you know, or even in a multi-lane, you mm -hmm. know, road. I mean, the vehicle traveling on the fourth or eighth lane up there, it's not going to affect me, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe just a couple of lanes nearby me. And, in a few cars, you know, yeah. in front of me or, or behind me. Exactly. I mean, all those situations have to be considered if we ever want to implement this into the multi-land roads, you know, the whole road network. And also the uh, direction. Should I get, like, information from upstream and downstream or just from upstream? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Mm. So basically what is relevant would be the downstream mm -hmm. vehicles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because my question is related to this one, so mm -hmm. because the information will be downstream or leading, mm -hmm. so how do you control the leading leading vehicle? Mm -hmm. So special, do you have some special treatment for leading vehicle speed? Uh, no, the leading vehicle, if it's not a green driving vehicle, then it will go as normal. Okay, normal yeah. driving. Vehicle. Yeah, normal driving. Fluctuation. Yeah, right. Stop and go. But if it's a green driving vehicle, then you would have mechanism to smooth. The second question is, do you consider a land change? No. 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 Yeah. But we believe this can be uh, extended to multiple land roads. If we have sufficient number of vehicles doing this, using this strategy, and if we have vehicles blocking all, basically blocking all the lands, then eventually they will form, they will you know, become just like one land. I probably have to go early, so I, maybe you'll explain later, but let me ask this question okay. uh, first. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you know uh, you wanted to consider a system where there's there's lower than 100% penetration. Exactly. Rate. So some vehicles doesn't have that. And how do you uh, sort of uh, take that into consideration here in this case? Yeah, those non-green driving vehicles they just use normal variables. Uh, they just use normal speed limit. Okay. While these green driving vehicles they have their own advisory speed limit. That's the difference. Okay. So so yeah, right. I understand. So, so all you're saying is that you design a feed, mm -hmm. the control feedback control system where you just take the information from other uh, equipped vehicles and exactly. do the calculation. Mm -hmm. But if there's, the there's no vehicle, specific, huh? if the lead vehicle is not equipped, mm -hmm. how are you getting the speed of the lead vehicle? Yeah, uh, that would 
have to be considered as the input. For example, in our study, we use uh, observed speed profile from NGSIM data sets, or we can use any other data sets. No, but I mean in, 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 in uh, when is the system is implemented. Mm -hmm. If I'm, a, I'm an equipped vehicle, yeah. mm -hmm. but I'm following an unequipped vehicle, yeah. so I have no information what the speed of the front vehicle is. No. Yeah. So I would have to depend on maybe further vehicles downstream or something. Mm, well, if we have, if uh, we can have our own speed, actually, I will talk about that. We are not using the leading vehicle speed okay. per se. We are using our own speed. Actually, okay. our own speed can represent the leading vehicle speed I in see. a sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. A follow-up question to um, what Dr. Fur just mentioned about lane changing. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the example you gave about the uh, super shuttle class driver, experience yeah. driver. If they do like a green drive, and like you just mentioned, people yeah. cut off. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, but the nice like, thing, you might not know that in Southern California, the HOV land was a discontinuous access. So basically, uh, there are only limited locations that other vehicles can cut off. That's, that's a really a good point. That's related to when we extend this to multiple land roads. But if we have reasonable market penetration rate, I mean, a number of vehicles doing this thing on multiple lands, then you can imagine eventually all lands will be blocked in a sense. Yeah. Okay. So is it okay to say that uh, your system, you know, your design will work in a less than 100 percent penetration scenario mm -hmm. simply because you ignored the the, the presence of those non-equipped vehicle uh, no no uh, actually just because they have to follow this green driving vehicles okay since you know if the for that example i mean on the hov lane if this uh, super shuttle is doing green driving then all vehicles following it that have to follow suit cannot mm -hmm. follow the regular of course yeah of course so that's because of the car following rule. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the unequipped vehicle yeah. would also benefit yeah, from an right. equipped vehicle. That's the idea. Because they are following them. Yeah. I would, uh, anyway, I, I was expecting sort of something really more special considerations. Uh, because, you know, your technique obviously, you know, can be applied to the case when there's a 100% penetration. Yes, right? yeah. Uh, but when you don't have 100% penetration, uh, they're just saying, well, I'll just you know, use the same thing, mm -hmm. but, but let the system sort of take care of itself. Yeah. You're not really doing something really special about the case where you have less than 100% penetration. Yeah. I, I don't see that sort of special thing. Yeah. But how can you do it? I mean, you can't communicate with these guys. Yeah. So what can you do? I don't know. <laughs> but, but, it's not, but it's not, uh, you know, a lot, uh, you know. That's an that's interesting special. Point. That's yeah. my actually. I, think I was that, expecting more. I guess actually, that's my actually. I consider that's a, that's an advantage of this um, algorithm. Actually, okay. yeah. without information from hundred percent people. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Actually, I think that's an advantage, and that is necessary in the in the initial stage of this connected vehicle. Sure. Sure. I understand. I understand. So I actually, understand. yeah. Since uh, maybe uh, I don't have time to get into the details of the. Mm -hmm. Uh, the techniques, but these are the results. If we have market penetration rate from zero to one hundred percent, and this will be the standard deviation of the speed, and we can see that it decreases with the, the market penetration rate, and in a non-linear fashion. And so are the emissions and the fuel consumption. So this is a zero percent saving, and this is a twenty percent saving. And this is a forty percent saving. So what we observe is that when the market penetration rate reaches 5%, then the marginal increase in this saving would be minimal. So basically, this kind of answers the, the question that we don't really need 100% of vehicles to communicate because of this uh, car following situation. But of course, if we have lane changing and so on, then the requirement should be higher, but we expect exactly to have similar trend. Um, I quite understand why um, so you're just relying on those non-equipped vehicles to do what's natural to them yeah uh, but if if I have a um, non-equipped vehicle that is the leading vehicle mm -hmm. it, it's 
yeah. speeding mm -hmm. up and whatever, doing sporadic yeah. things. Uh, the following vehicle, which is a quick mm -hmm. vehicle, mm -hmm. but that's the first one mm -hmm. in the pack, in the platoon that's, yeah. that's equipped. It will essentially wisely control its own speed exactly. without doing the car following. Yeah. Um, and then it will benefit all the cars following it. Yeah. It would act as the lead platoon. Yeah. 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 The right. Right. Well, of course, I mean later for a, you know even further upstream vehicles, we can still have some oscillations, but that oscillations would be significantly smaller than what leading you. When you calculate um, the uh, advisory speed for a following equipped vehicle, mm -hmm. um, you take input of the other equipped vehicles. Yes. Uh, but but you know, in between you and another leading vehicle that's mm -hmm. equipped, there may be some not equipped vehicle, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. How are the speed of those uh, vehicles considered? We don't it's, not, consider not, it's not considered yeah. there. We don't have information. You don't have information. Yeah. However, will there be a conflict, you know, as a result? Like, I mean, if, if you, based on that calculation, you come up with this, this speed V, mm -hmm. but that speed V would then result you into bumping into the previous vehicle that is not equipped. I, I don't see that yeah, in the okay, equation. Okay, actually that is the case. In the equation we have two parts. Uh -huh. This is the speed limit. Speed limit means that uh, you, you know, in the ideal situation you can drive at this speed limit. Uh -huh. But if the leading vehicle is too close, then you have to use the second part, that's the car falling part, that to maintain safety. Oh, so this, so is, a, this is speed that. limit, actually not speed. This is advisory speed limit, not advisory speed, actually. Okay. Yeah. It's minimum of those two terms. Yeah, minimum of those two minimum terms. Those two terms. Yeah. Right. So the safety is guaranteed. So this is still um, natural human-driven vehicle. This is not autonomous vehicle. For autonomous vehicle, we cannot do this. Except for autonomous vehicle, we have to control the acceleration rate, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but I believe 100% petrol will maybe to lower this uh, performance, uh, I mean, lower this uh, uh, emission much, much more than the previous one. But it seems to me, yeah. uh, about 5% is going to be the same. So yeah. yeah. It's why, rising. Why did you get this, these numbers? The uh, we do simulation, yeah. yeah. So why was that a weight worse than the situation? If they have like 100%? No, I mean, it's not worse. It's not worse. Yes. I mean, I mean have much, much better. more, much better. Oh, okay. But it's not much better. It's that's yeah. almost the same. Yeah. Because it's one lane and everybody yeah. is following. Yeah, everyone follows each other. Not, yeah. That's yeah. it's all if you have one, you know, one uh, equipped vehicle every twenty vehicles, it shows that that's good enough mm -hmm. because of a car following. It's surprising. Yeah. 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 If it's a multi-lane situation, that would be different. I don't know if here you consider the the the, the emissions of all the vehicles, including yeah. non equipped yeah. vehicles. Yeah. Exactly. I yeah. consider all vehicles. When we calculate which I which I don't believe that's the case. Okay, I can tell you an example. Let's say I have a thousand cars. Mm -hmm. Only two cars are equipped, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now you can perfectly control, the, you know, those two 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 vehicles. But the rest of uh, nine hundred ninety eight vehicles are not controlled. Yeah. I mean, they they are all crazy people. They they accelerate this accelerate so much that your your emission is going to be huge. Yeah. It's so bad. But when I have a thousand cars are all equipped, mm -hmm. then obviously you can do a lot better. Yeah. So I don't believe that number. Yeah, so yeah. it depends what on... What you said is just 0.2%. Indeed, yeah. the saving would be made. Okay, all right, all right. But even at the 6%, yeah. I can yeah. come up with an example where but that doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah. Point. So in addition to the penetration rate, particularly for the small rate, the locations of those equipped sure. vehicles also matter. Yeah. So this let's say if all the five vehicles out of 100 are placed at the end of the floor, sure. they won't have Definitely. any effect, yeah. right? Yeah, but, the yeah, reduction would be but another big yeah. thing, I think, is coming because this is using simulation. Yeah. using mm -hmm. several automata simulation. Mm -hmm. In reality, the human behavior might be very different. Yeah. And I think that's something where really something like our human in the loop simulator yeah. might be able to get at a better, more accurate, more accurate, result, yeah. because sure. this is based on pure yeah. 
idealistic yeah. behavior. I have no percentage is too good to be yeah, true. I, I, yeah. can I can understand. <laughs> Sometimes it will go down. I can understand that yeah, question. China, I think it's somehow true, but maybe yeah. the percent, you know, the but cutoff point is. We have to understand this market penetration yeah. rate is a stochastic concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the average. You know, we simulate for many, many situations. Of course, under some extreme cases, like what you mentioned, all green driving vehicles are at the end of the platoon. Yeah. It doesn't help. Yeah. That's true. But what if they are at the beginning? Yeah. I mean, the well, beginning the vehicle, the then everything will be perfect. Yeah. So this should be understood as an average yeah. sense. Yeah. It's an average sense. Yeah. That, that's, that's, so that's when, point. when you did the simulation, those uh, non-equipped vehicles, are simulated using what? Uh, using the same car falling model, but with the posted speed limit. I see. Like, for example, 65 miles per hour. And what type of standard deviation for the speed are you using there? Uh, what type of standard deviation for the speed? Uh, we consider the all vehicles standard deviation in the speed. I mean, what type of a standard deviation? Yeah, we calculate the standard deviation like for all vehicles. Yeah. Huge job. Yeah. So it's yeah. like a realistic yeah. deviation, right? Uh, realistic. So, uh, surprised. Uh, I'm surprised. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, we are using... So, so what, what is the specific value, for example, that you use as a standard deviation for this vehicle? Oh, okay. These are in uh, miles per hour. The unit is yeah. in miles per hour. Standard deviation. I guess you were asking. It has the same unit as the speed. No, no, no. I didn't say that that was standard deviation. I couldn't read that. Oh, yeah, this is a standard deviation. Yeah. So, so yeah, you, you will have lower standard deviation, but actually, we, we still have standard deviation. We still have some oscillations, actually. It's so, not perfectly controlled. So, it, it sounds like uh, your algorithm, your model, would work very nicely mm -hmm. uh, when you have low speeds and low standard deviations. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm mentioning this because yeah. uh, when you have large standard deviations, you know, no matter how much they uh, mm -hmm. accelerate or decelerate the uh -huh. ratio, yeah. the acceleration deceleration, people in between, as, mm -hmm. as uh, discussed before, yeah. uh, may still find an opportunity and drive more aggressively. But when you have low standard deviations and mm -hmm. when uh, especially the speed limits, mm -hmm. you have, like, you are looking at local roads. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole thing could also work as a calming, if you have a calming effect on drivers as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that would be also an additional benefit. Exactly, actually. In terms of aggressive behavior. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, I don't know, maybe uh, you can narrow the benefit in terms of safety. You guys have this. Uh, well, on, on the other nervous. side, when, when you have someone, you know, you, you are in, stuck in traffic and yeah. uh, there's someone who is accelerating very, at a very low rate yeah. or decelerating at a very low rate, you know, you may become irritated. Yeah, and you that's may, true. You may actually at some point just pass them by, breaking yeah. a couple yeah. of <laughs> laws and so on. So, yeah. you yeah. know, there, there's a big trade off there. Yeah. Um. Okay. Very nice talk to you. I have to go. Sorry, but okay. I'm very interested in your vehicle bike thing. So maybe someone can ask him and okay. get some information for me. Yeah, okay. sure. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for coming and for the question. So basically, this is non-linear. Okay, I didn't finish the story. Uh, this kind of finding, uh, finding is not unique for connected vehicle system. I mean, here is uh, in terms of emission, and actually, uh, you know, one research by uh, um, Professor Recker and Xu Yang. And he studied the impacts of market penetration rate on the uh, travel time saving in the uh, route choice behaviors. And they also found similar pattern. They found that 5% is good enough. Actually, too many of these people doing that, they may not be beneficial at all in the, you know, when we consider route choice because of the old reaction issue. Sure. So uh, this actually, um, uh, yeah. And then if we consider, mm, compare this with uh, uh, replacing vehicles by zero emission vehicles, then we know that with zero emission vehicles, it will be linear. If you replace more, then the saving will be more. So eventually, it will be much better than just using green driving. But uh, interestingly, due to this non-linear feature, it looks like in the initial uh, stage, uh, this green driving strategy can be more beneficial than uh, developing new technology. Much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. 
but why is that emission not cleaner? Uh, you, we are considering uh, you are zero sure. emission vehicles. Yeah, we replace more thing. than uh, zero. No, no, but still we have the car following outside. No. Uh, no? Because we these are the zero emission. Ah, like, uh, the driving behavior will not be cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Assume the same driving uh, behavior uh, as before, yeah. but now if you have zero emission, yeah. I mean, I hear case, then that would be like <coughs> linear relation. <coughs> so it shows some potential of such strategies. And we also consider the impacts of communication delay. Definitely that's a realistic issue in this uh, interview communication system. And we found that with the longer delay, definitely the savings would be smaller. But the difference is not that significant, up to a one minute delay. One minute delay is considered to be really long I mean, for this uh, PSRC networks. Mm. So that just shows that the algorithm we de uh, designed is pretty um, uh, robust and then uh, we also did some field tests and we again I mean here we are now using DSRC because uh, um, uh, we don't uh, have this expertise in that but we have uh, developed this smartphone based uh, system and uh, there are advantages of this smartphone based system because uh, of the high market penetration rate and the integrated GPS and the other sensors and also the 3G and 4G networks are pretty fast already. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a performance of the system based on the uh, different location of the first equipment car? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have the results? Uh, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I mean, we can imagine if the vehicle is uh, further downstream, that's better. Uh, then you will. Uh, be able to influence more cars. So here the results we present is the average effect. Okay. Yeah. And with the, also as uh, noticed that with the lower market penetration rate, we see this, uh, you know, the, the, in terms of the effects, the average effects are like that, the, the variance will be much higher with the lower market penetration rate. What's the delay for the smartphone? Or, yeah, vehicle based. Yeah. Uh, for vehicle based, uh, the delay is in the order of uh, one second. One second. Uh, but what we found that uh, the delay, the communication delay itself, it actually is uh, in the order of 0 0.1 second in our current technology, uh, including the communication delay from the leading vehicle to the to the server and then server to the following vehicle. Yeah. Mm. But. The GPS unit itself uh, just receives signal every one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen uh, yeah. yeah then uh, that caused the uh, you know the delay in terms of information. Yeah. So that dominates the, the, the delay in this network. And then yeah, we, we consider the accuracy and the communication delay in this and uh, they are still reasonable in the order of one second. Um, um, or actually, we consider. I mean, in our in algorithm, you can work up to sixty seconds. Actually, GPS accuracy is a big problem. When I was implementing in many vehicles, because yeah. you know, many uh, ten meters range, if you a cheap GPS, thirty dollars. Yeah. Of course, if you consider differential GPS, of course, it's half uh, centimeters. But right now, we don't have money to afford yeah. those differential but, GPS. But you don't need high accuracy yet. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it's, uh, yeah, in our case, uh, that's why we chose this environmental impact, not safety. For safety, definitely, that's yeah. a big, big issue. But for environmental, you don't need that much. Yeah. It depends where you are, actually. If you're in the city, yeah. you know, the whole building even worse. It's yeah. much worse. Sure, yeah. Yeah. but I mean, all you need is really speed. So you don't need uh, accurate uh, location to, because it's not a safety yeah. application. Yeah. You may not achieve this high level of savings, but it's not worse, basically. Yeah. The because bottom line is that... You don't know which, yeah. which GPS is your leading vehicle, right? It's going to be surrounded. Uh, but I don't care. I, I'm mm -hmm. just getting an advisory uh, speed. Advisory speed limit, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. the, 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 the vehicle does not have to follow that. So, uh, for the safety concerns, I mean, definitely that can also be addressed to a certain extent. I mean, if we see you know, the following vehicle gets really irrigated, then uh, you might abandon this green driving in practice. So, as I said, this is not an autonomous vehicle. For autonomous vehicle, it might be an issue. But this is still a human driven vehicle. But of course, our simulation results are under this idea of conditions. Yeah. Uh, 
but we can still see some benefits. And then uh, the communication is relayed, relayed through a server, and uh, and we uh, tested three scenarios uh, with uh, two vehicles. One leading vehicle uh, intentionally stop and go on the ring road, actually during weekends on a local uh, local um, commercial center. We have a ring road there, and the leading vehicle doing stop and go, and the following vehicle can exactly follow this one, and this is the result. And we are also calculating the advisory speed limit. So you can see that our algorithm needs some warm-up time because it, try, it has to collect enough information of the uh, green driving vehicle themselves in order to come up with a reasonable estimation of the oscillation pattern. And then the second result, uh, this is done by uh, heuristic green driving. The, the following vehicle knows that the leading vehicle is doing stop and go and try to you know, using his experience to do green driving. And third one, we use, apply our own algorithm. And then uh, we can see that with this heuristic green driving, we can also see some savings. Yeah, and, uh, and but uh, with our algorithm, the savings are significantly higher with more information. These, these are field results or simulation results? Mm, the trajectories are the real trajectories. But the emissions, we still use the semen to calculate. But, but so you have vehicles in the field yeah. receiving the messages, actually. Yes. Through the smartphone interface or something exactly. like that. Exactly. We have this interface. So that's excellent, actually, that these are field results, not okay. simulation. Yeah. yeah. Actually, our human interface, I mean, uh, we, we are also interested in this. I mean, we visit Dr. Wu's uh, program. We didn't get that far. We actually have one passenger sitting right to the driver and telling the driver, okay, <laughs> so this is our way of a human interface. We That's the best interface. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did consider, you know, this part, I mean, the safety concerns. There are safety concerns. We don't want to distract the, the, the driver that much. So, um, yeah, we developed this uh, control theoretical formulation of this green driving problem and using the feedback control. And we also analyzed the performance of some simple strategies. They may not be realistic, but they still uh, shed a lot of light onto how to design a good one. And then uh, we proposed a distributed cooperative strategy. And uh, it has two parts, independent advisory speed limit and then cooperation. And we also demonstrate the smoothing effect even when just one vehicle. For one vehicle, it will benefit at least this one vehicle. It might benefit some following vehicle, that's also possible. And when uh, with higher market penetration rate, actually we find that 5% is kind of sufficient. And the delay is okay with one minute. And we also have a field test and found that the algorithmic method is better than this heuristic green driving strategy. And in the future, we want to definitely apply, extend this to much land roads with land changing, merging, diverging, all these kind of behaviors, and also artillery roads, and other control algorithms. And the information, there's a lot of issue here, how to manage the information, how to share, how to retrieve, and also another important is uh, things to check the relevance between all these vehicles. Actually, in our test, we just have two vehicles, it's straightforward, but in reality, we have to determine which information to use. And also, the human-machine interface, as I said, we have a really naive, really simple uh, human-machine interface. And then if we consider, we implement it with a smartphone, but if we have DSRC, then actually there will be interplay between this communication system and this traffic system. Actually, um, intuitively, with a smoother <coughs> speed profile, the connectivity will be better because vehicles are more evenly spaced and uh, this can give us higher connectivity, but the throughput can suffer because of uh, a lot of communication and interference and so on. And uh, then uh, even further, we can extend this to uh, develop more and efficient traffic management uh, methods uh, to improve the capacity of critical bottlenecks and to stabilize traffic in a larger network and uh, in arterial networks and uh, 
also other behaviors, we may be able to formulate the problem as a control in theory problem. And uh, uh, that is all of my presentation. Thank you very much for being with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? One quick question. When you did the field test, mm -hmm. what was the percentage of the equipped vehicles? Or was it only two vehicles? Only, only two, two vehicles. Just one in front and one in the yeah. okay, We are afraid to involve our oh, vehicles yeah. because of the safety yeah. concerns. Yeah. And Dr. Chow, before he left, wanted to ask about this uh, mm -hmm. smart uh, phone application that we did yeah. between the bicycles and the uh, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the vehicles. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, how was that implemented, or uh, uh, what was the idea? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Yeah. The idea is that uh, this car constantly sends its location to the server, uh -huh. and then, uh, or oh, actually, that way. The sorry, bike. The bike constantly yeah. sends the its location to the server, and then the server would inform these cars, surrounding cars, to let the car. Uh, we become aware of the existence of the bike. That's a simple idea, yeah. and we implement it. But we have an, we did some preliminary tests, but uh, definitely we can learn from you guys regarding this large scale uh, field test uh, efforts. Now, actually, Doctor Ch uh, Chow actually has a smartphone test bed, mm -hmm. so they have one thousand smartphones, and they oh. do experiments. So that's something. You might yeah. want to connect with him if you sure. want to test some of these applications on. Mm -hmm. on okay. Yeah. I could send him an okay. email. Yeah. 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 It's called it's a phone lab. It's oh, phone lab. Okay. And they have 1,000 mm -hmm. users. Oh, that's uh, good. And they are interested in new application to test on, oh, okay. on the smartphone. It's an NSF project. Oh, actually, we developed so far. We developed the four um, smartphone apps for different applications. Sure. So it might there might be something. To but they are all of a small scale sure. for concept yeah. testing. Great. Great. Any other questions? We need to head to yeah. airport. We need to head to the airport. Yeah, we need to go to the airport. And we need to clear the room because there are people waiting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much.